Spines. Spines are speculative objects that are uniquely identified, data searchable, physically trackable, sustainably recyclable, virtually designed, and manufactured by fabricators. Blog jigs. A blog jig is an object that can use the web to disseminate a record of its interactions with people, contexts, other objects. Ubiquitous computing, desktop and mainframe computers, quietly and calmly disappear into the general environment. Pervasive computing, mobile computers, body-mounted devices, networked media invade everywhere. Physical computing, sensing and controlling the physical world with computers. Ambient computing, smoothly integrating computing into physical spaces while constantly and seamlessly adapting to changing situations, contexts, and needs. An ecology of things, physical objects that are interacting as semi-autonomous agents. Things that think, physical areas saturated with hard artificial intelligence. Smart dust, ultra-tiny, ultra-cheap, ultra-disposable sensors and processors that can be scattered like pollen. And last but certainly not least, spy chips, a scheme by governments and big corporations to track your every move through ubiquitous computation. Next picture, please. This is my book, Shaping Things, from MIT Press. My little work as visionary in residence at Arts Center. First time I ever written a theory, design theory book, but that was part of my residency at the design school was to actually publish a work on design. There it is. I'm ridiculously happy about it. Beautiful book, really. It's so pretty. It's designed by Lorraine Wilde, dear friend of mine. Um, and, you know, and it comes up with its own scheme. Now I'm not claiming, you know, which involves the neologism spine. I mean, I was thinking about ubiquitous computation quite hard because I was trying to dramatize it. And I realized that it probably was not going to be either ubiquitous or computation. And that you might think about it more, um, more fruitfully if you thought about, thought about it from the point of view of objects. I mean, what does it take for an object to actually take place in a ubiquitous computation environment? Think of it from the point of view of physical actors and their kind of relationship to this scheme. So, you know, it's a rather elaborate theory. It's kind of worked out in extreme kind of extra buzzy and whizzy detail. But the basic scheme is fairly simple. Next slide, please. I think it's about this. I mean, my theory is that the hero of ubiquitous computation is this. Not a smart object, not artificial intelligence, not overwhelming fields of data, but the everyday object, the absolutely dullest things we have. Not super laptops, not glittery things, not uh, you know, uh, the, you know, advanced uh, the hardware, not reality keys, not uh, remote controls for living, not refrigerators talking to your sink. This, <laughs> the everyday object, you no, know, a thing that is without any, you know, any valor or any kind of sci-fi gloss, because this is basically the problem. It's not enough to sort of automate small pieces of our environment. We basically got to get to grips with the bulk of our material, the dullest things in the world. Uh, and they are ubiquitous, because, you know, cheap, dull, common things are ubiquitous. The best way to deal with them is to, you know, a technology which sort of goes where they go. And where, where do they go? Well, they've got, they've got uh, barcodes on them. Next slide, please. Now, barcoding doesn't actually suit the purposes of the US military. They would prefer, like any sensible forward-thinking group, to remove paper media and replace it with electronic media. So the equivalent of a paper barcode in a 21st century military environment is an electronic tag. And this is the group within the within the uh, US military, which is responsible for enforcing and directing the use of radio frequency identifi identification tags. Next slide, please. This is a contemporary Japanese electronic chip. This is the smallest RFID chip. You can see it next to this fountain pen there. 
You can see it's much, much, much smaller than a barcode. Doesn't require a whole lot of real estate. It's expensive. How long that stays expensive? Anybody's guess? Next slide, please. There's another version, German version. This is an organic ink semiconductor. In other words, it has the function of that other smaller object. So instead of having any metal or silicon in it, it's simply made of a sprayed on plastic. In other words, it's basically the same thing as a barcode, just another material, except it also has radio frequency ID built into it. So you can do it with ink. You don't actually need to combine a radio and a computer. These are quite expensive. They're still lab curiosities. But there they are. A proof of concept. Next slide, please. Right. Now this is the state of the art in contemporary ubiquitous computation theory. This is a recent paper by my colleague Julian B. Bleeker, Dr. Julian Bleeker from uh, USC. Uh, and he, um, he wrote this paper after we had a discussion about the subject. This is his blog jig paper. Now Julian is He's a designer and uh, you know, a, a media theoretician. So when I came up with my mad scheme for spines, which you can see him tag clouding there, spine, spine, RFIDs, RFIDs, for basic networks, etc. He sort of thought, of like, what's the most immediate kind of project we could actually do? And kind of, so he's come up with this scheme for blog jigs, which he and I agree are, might be considered larval spines. This is kind of a practical step forward. It doesn't take much for a contemporary media lab to make objects that can blog. Right? I mean, they just establish their presence on the network and go for it. So here you see you know, a basically design visionary notion getting a little closer to some physical traction. <coughs> Next paper, please. Next slide. Yeah. This is, um, this is, the web meme map by Tim O'Reilly. This is the web 2.0 map. Now this is kind of the state of the art in contemporary internet design. Tim is the uh, publisher of O'Reilly Publishing. I, I don't expect you to parse this. This is actually very complicated and not directly related to, uh, to my thesis, but it's a sign of the ferment that's actually going on in the contemporary internet, things like Wikipedia, PageRank, Flickr, Delicious, Blogs, BitTorrent, and so forth. You know, and these are the kind of things that distinguish it from Internet 1.0. And this is his sort of scheme for Web 2.0. The things I'm describing, I think, would probably be clocked at about Web 5.0. But I think these things are actually a trend in the direction of the kind of stuff I'm forecasting. And it's a fascinating document. I mean, my hat is off to O'Reilly for doing you know, what he did. Next slide, please. All right, now this is one of my favorite sites for covering technological oddities. This is um, We Make Money Not Art by Régine de Bobby, who is from Belgium. Now, I, I, I picked this particular site, although I'm a big fan of Régine's. So I think she's the king hell blogger of the electronic art scene. When I first started reading this woman's website, I thought there must be 30 people doing it. Uh, no, she's just a really good techno art journalist. But I included it because of this particular art thing she's covering here, by this Megan Trainer installation which uses embedded RFID tags to trigger audio databases and illustrates a technology that promises to become more prevalent in the coming years, as she aptly says. It's been my understanding really that uh, the tech art scene usually precedes tech commercialization by about five to seven years and I think that's the sign of a healthy social order really. I mean I'm paying a lot of attention to tech art to see whether it's going to start picking up you know RFID installations if it's going to if it's going to start blogging in other words I don't think the schemes I'm talking about are ready for the prime time I think RFID is ready for prime time as a logistics and shipping thing for Walmart, for grocers, for, you know, to establish more transparency in the supply chain, et cetera, et cetera.